Alright guys, we're going to be doing a quick guide for Planetary Annihilation today, because the one in game isn't really good for anything. Um, what you want to do is jump into an AI match, and then click New System until you get a planet with two moons, and add an AI and wait for the planets to build. Um, one thing that will happen half the time is you'll end up on an opposite planet, or the other half of the time you'll end up on the same planet as the enemy. Either way, uh, you'll get time to look at the buildings and stuff like that, and you know, if they're on the same planet as you, it'll be a good, quick uh, experience for combat and defending yourself, which is very important. Uh, we both got Johnny Five this match, which is pretty good. Uh, the most important thing to do uh, when you start your match is to set up your camera waypoints and uh, find out which planet you want to be your main base. Hit Shift 1 and then go to the other planet and hit Shift 2. That way you can go back and forth between them by pressing Alt 1 and Alt 2 quickly. Uh, you can, of course, queue up. Uh, groups of units by pressing control 1, control 2, etc. and select those groups of units uh, though most of the time they're not going to be lasting long enough to be useful unless you've got you know, massive armies or you're playing with more than one person. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and throw down a bot factory. Uh, the vehicle factory, air factory there, uh, you can build whatever you want. Um, most people build a bot factory because the doxes uh, are pretty good for building quickly and they're very quick to get around and set up a decent patrol. They do good amounts of damage, etc. Uh, the vehicle factory has slightly slower units with more hit points, got good range, there's fire tanks that take down buildings very quickly. Right now I'm queuing up fabricator bots, doxes, and grenadiers. Um, you can shift click on a unit to produce five of them and that's good for building up large queues that way you don't have to micromanage every single factory and you know if you don't have a limited number that you can build you can queue up a hundred or two hundred units if you wanted it's just about maintaining uh, your resource intake production and storage so one way to do that is by uh, click and dragging to place multiple metal extractors you don't have to start with one in the middle you can drag on open land uh, and then what we're going to do over here is lay down a row of energy plants which make energy and then uh, have the commander build energy storage. Storage is good for metal and energy that we have a buffer of resources to use in case you need to ramp up production or activate a teleporter because you have to have at least a 1000 energy uh, to activate your teleporters. If you're trying to hook them up and it's not working, that's probably the reason why. So here we go, building storage units. And uh, one thing to keep in mind, uh, like I said, is that this game is all about managing your resources and making use of them. Uh, so have your factories constantly building something, make sure that your fabricators are building something that they're doing, you know, that they're spending your resources. Uh, it's important to build defenses and radars and uh, control turret towers, turrets, things like that. Uh, that's how big the uh, advanced factories are. They're larger than the, than the tier ones, but you don't want to focus on them right away because they take a very long time to build. And uh, you don't really need the advanced technologies until you've got a decent establishment already. Uh, the way you can select uh, multiple units of the same type is you can double click them, or you can click on one and hit Control Z to select all of the units of the same type. Uh, clicking and dragging like that will select whatever's the majority in the box. You know, if they're mostly combat units, it'll take them. If they're mostly fabricators, it'll pick them instead. So I've already made enemy contact, which means that they are on this planet, unfortunately. So we're going to have to focus on setting up some kind of defenses um, on other planets where there's terrain like mountains and valleys and things like that. You can build walls to section off uh, areas and make it more difficult. What I did right there was I clicked my combat units select a patrol and then uh, just basically click and drag across the entire planet and they spread out um, but go in a circle basically around around the planet that way you can um, cover all angles and see where the enemy are again clicking and dragging to place down metal extractors that way my fabricators are doing something and uh, getting these guys moved over we're seeing air factories we're seeing everything that our enemy has and our units might get taken out but that's okay uh, the doxes are pretty cheap, and like I said, that's what they're good for, scouting stuff out. Um, I see that they have an air factory and that they've already built several air units, so I'm going to go ahead and put down my, my air factory now. Uh, the commander has very fast build time, but when you uh, put other units on with them as well, it speeds it up. So i got my vehicle factory, bot factory, and air factory now. Uh, that means I can build whatever kinds of unit that I need. Um, the only building that the commander 
can't build right off the bat is the orbital launcher, and that's one of the most important buildings to have because of what it's what allows you to get off planet and um, take units off planet, build radars. Uh, you can build orbital fabricators that uh, will build things in orbit, or you can take them to gas giants and build rigs that'll go down and take uh, resources up. I'm gonna go ahead and place this uh, teleporter to show you. Uh, which way you need to orient it, those little legs sticking out the back or the entrance basically and you want to make sure that you've got that set up the right way. There's the orbital launcher, uh, doesn't really matter which way it goes but uh, you can rotate any building in this game. So again the teleporter making sure that you set it up the right way that way your units don't have to run around the opposite side to get through it. Queuing up a bunch of units now. I feel like I've got enough fabricators, so I'm going to go ahead and start building a decent sized army. Um, you can select factories and right click at a point to set up a waypoint for all of the units that they produce to go. Uh, as you can see, the commander has very good defensive, offensive capabilities, so keeping him in the middle of your units is uh, a good idea initially, you know, early on, because you haven't set up that much defense. There, the teleporter got finished, and uh, everybody's going to be focusing on building the orbital orbital launcher. There we go, put the commander over there. And uh, my first air units are getting built, which are good for uh, bumblebees, are good for air to air, and then uh, the other ones are good for attacking ground units. The bombers are good for attacking ground units. It's important to uh, maintain your buildings. If they start getting damaged, you can repair them, but if uh, you don't finish building them, they will eventually destroy themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a radar there, that way I can get uh, some kind of tracking going on for the enemy. It is a lot to take in initially for this game, so uh, just play through a couple AI matches and you'll get the hang of it. But like I said, the most important thing is just maintaining your resource production and making sure that you're using your resources. Maintaining that 100% efficiency means that you're constantly doing something, and then you know you're not you're not just letting it pile up and sit there doing nothing. So as you can see, uh, if the enemy is on the same planet as you, you're going to be getting pretty quick introduction to combat. The orbital launcher just finished, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, once these guys have started clearing out the enemies and uh, give me a good front line, I'm going to go ahead and put down those turrets for additional defense. You can see the doxes have pretty good damage, and uh, it's always important to attack your enemy's uh, resource produ production. Uh, that way their economy starts to suffer and they can't build as much to attack you with, etc. I'm uh, going to go ahead and put a, uh, an ARKYD, which is the radar, um, an Aceris, which is the trans ship transport, basically. You can take your commander off planet, you can take any unit off planet with it, but most importantly your commander, take him off planet with it and uh, get him to a different place. That way, keep him safe and start building bases elsewhere. You can do the same thing with another fabricator unit. But here we've got the ARKYD. I'm going to click patrol again and drag from a zoomed out perspective. That way he starts going around the entire planet, scoping out the enemy units, telling me what kind of buildings they have, etc. This is not the best way to handle your doxes because they're going to be taken out like that, as you can see. Uh, it's important to keep them moving because once the bomber projectiles are in there, you can get out of their range. Uh, but it's okay, I'm just trying to show you why, how easily they get blown up and why it's important to have other units like tanks and uh, flying units as well. So like I said, you don't want to focus on those those tier 2, the, you don't want to focus on the advanced factories just yet, but you know, getting a, a diverse army of your own going, that way you can combat different threats. As you can see, they've got a pretty decent bomber squadron built up already, but that's okay because I've got what I need to take care of them. And again, the commander doing massive damage on his own. I'm gonna go ahead and queue up some more uh, defense turrets. Luckily, my efficiency has been at 100% this whole time because I've just always had a queue going, always been building things, and uh, that's what's most important, like I said. Make sure you're not wasting your resources. Um, let's see. One way to select all of your fabricators, uh, just in case there might be some sitting around doing nothing, is to hit F. Uh, that'll pick up all the ones that are idle and not doing anything. 
Uh, for whatever reason you have factories that aren't doing anything, you can hit Shift F2 and that'll select all of the factories that don't have anything queued. You can either turn them off or, you know, ideally you want to be able to build units with them. I'm going to go ahead and lay down a second air factory uh, because I see this enemy is very focused on bombers and things like that. Uh, it's oh, there we go, my energy is getting maxed out, but it, again, it's always important to be building something. Putting up a bunch of spinners. If you queue up units that you don't want to be building, you can right click to take them away. You can also shift right click to take down five units at a time. So it goes both ways. Each factory, the, the bot factory, vehicle factory, and air have their own fabricator, and um, they all build the same thing except for the fact that they build the advanced version of what they were produced at. So the Fabricator bot builds the advanced spot factory, uh, the flying fabricator builds the advanced air factory, etc. Uh, they can all build the orbital launcher and they can all build teleporters and things like that as well. Um, you need the advanced bots to build things like uh, advanced metal extractors uh, and uh, the advanced turrets. The advanced bots are the only ones, uh, the advanced fabricators, the, all of the flying vehicle bot, uh, they are the ones that can build the. Uh, planetary engines, the Haley's, that way you can crash planets into each other, and they can build catalysts, which you put around the metal planet's laser to build the Annihilator, which is basically the Death Star weapon. And, uh, again, you see my metal getting maxed out, so I should be producing something. These are combat fabricators, they repair units in the middle of fights, and uh, they can also lay down these minefields, which is uh, pretty useful. You can do them one at a time, click and drag to do many and that's, that's a quick and easy way to set up a fast defense uh, because as you can see they build very quickly. So my units now are engaging the enemy and uh, I feel at this point since they're retreating it's good to go ahead and push the, push the attack again making sure to attack their uh, resource production whenever possible. Go ahead, go ahead and move down, push a little bit further keep it Keep an eye uh, on the opposite sides of your face, of course, because it's a planet. They'll just go around the opposite side, um, and you know, one one small force at the front door could be a distraction for someone coming around the back. So again, it's important to have your defenses up. It's important to have radars. Um, each fabricator unit can build regular radar, can build a planetary radar, and then the, the advanced radar has a much larger range. Uh, but having the ARKYD up is very useful because it gives you vision and uh, putting them in patrol around the planet uh, just gives you, you know, sweeping sweeping views of what's being established. I'm going to go ahead and set up multiple patrol lanes for this uh, bomber, this bomber squad. That way they fly in that area only and you do that by holding shift of course and uh, click and drag for patrol. So these enemy bombers are doing a good amount of damage to my units. More and that's why I put that uh, patrol area up. So my resources are getting maxed out right now. Um, I could be building a lot more buildings, I suppose, or focused on focus on uh, the commander over here, which is what I suddenly realized I should be doing. Throw down a bot factory, that way I can start producing uh, fabrication bots, uh, metal extractors on that second moon, and then eventually work up to the advanced bot factory. Since we're going to be crashing that moon into this one over here. Normally you've got other players to help control units and check out other planets for you as well. And again, just making sure uh, that I've got my factories constantly producing something. I could have hit Shift F2 and it would have selected all of the factories at once. I could have uh, just had every single unit production menu up at the same time and gone through them very quickly. Just to save a little bit of time. Queuing up some Avengers here. I did that earlier as well. They're orbital fighters. At this point, uh, it's important to focus on having storage facilities, that way you're, you're constantly building up your buffer and uh, again, start producing start producing the advanced factories at this point, most likely. All of the units produced by the orbital launcher can fly in between planets on their own, they don't need anything special to be done. I go ahead and drop down a vehicle factory with the commander while I'm waiting for that uh, fabrication bot to be produced. Uh, but like I said, the orbital launcher can make units that fly in between planets on their own. 
and uh, it's important to keep that in mind because uh, with the orbital fabricator you can build units in orbit or you can go to gas giants for example that other units can't land on uh, you can start extracting resources from there and uh, it's a great way to boost your economy very quickly oftentimes you have a player focused on economy another one focusing on fighting so I'm gonna go ahead and lay down another minefield just for some quick defense uh, that way we don't have to worry about uh, sending a normal fabricator over there to build turrets and things like that again on other planets there will be terrain like mountains and valleys like these uh, that you can build walls in between to shut off certain routes for enemy units and stuff like that I'm gonna go ahead and take a fabricator unit to that other planet that way we can start building some kind of base and uh, take these guys even though this planet's gonna get destroyed you know uh, it will produce metal in the meantime so get them working on that and just as a defensive measure put down the vehicle factory to make some tanks and I'll set them on a patrol around the planet that way I'll be notified if the enemy lands there for whatever reason so here's that uh, Sarah is dropping the fabricator off skip forward a couple minutes uh, just because there's a lot of unnecessary building that I start doing I try and you know set up this example uh, my guy who was laying down the minefield got taken out unfortunately but I've got a decent sized bomber squadron built up and this is the kind of situation that you hope for is uh, catching the enemy bombers while they're on the ground and if some of my guys get taken out uh, try and pull them away from the enemy defenses of course uh, but when you can engage them while they're on the ground you've got you know surprise advantage and that's exactly what you want by this point uh, the enemy is very well contained and I could roll over them with an army that I wanted if I wanted to, uh, it's just I'm trying to set this up for an example of uh, planet smashing. So again, queuing up units, making sure that you've got uh, something always being produced is the example that you want to follow. And uh, at this point, I could set up a teleporter on the second planet, on the main planet, uh, and save all the units over there. Uh, but most of the time the enemy's not going to be able to make it off the moon. If you keep pressure on them early enough, uh, you won't. they won't be able to set up uh, an off-planet an off planet base. So finally, uh, we start building that advanced bot factory and send my little army and patrol around that planet. And then we've got the Aceras here. Dropped off that fabricator, so he's going to go ahead and start setting up uh, his tier 1 factory. Tell the Aceras to go pick up the commander, skip forward, oh he's gone, and then click unload. And now our commander is going to be safely off of the moon that we're going to be crashing into it. The other one, as you can see the orbits there, all of the orbital units can do that. They don't need any kind of special special research, which is what's great about this game. Instead of, uh, you just need to focus on building and again managing your resources. So my energy efficiency is... Uh, gone to hell right now and that's why it's taking so long to do this. I'm going to be skipping forward a couple more times. Uh, I'm going to send the uh, Ceres around just to patrol uh, to keep eyes on this planet and uh, let me know again just in case if the enemy gets off. So here we go, the advanced bot finally. Um, these catalysts are massive and there you need five of them around the metal planet's laser. But we're going to go ahead and place down a Haley and once it starts building it the other fabricators can jump on board and uh, help build it as well. Unfortunately again my energy is very bad so it's gonna take a long time to get this Haley built. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and skip forward for that. So once it gets finished <laughs> dozens of units working on that right now trying to build uh, energy down there in the bottom, bottom left but uh, once it gets finished, all you have to do is come up to this pull down, so click, send, to click send to annihilate, and then uh, zoom in on the planet that you want, and then select the exact location that you want it to crash into. Uh, if you're crashing a moon into a smaller, into a larger planet, uh, it'll only make a massive explosion. It won't completely destroy the planet. That's why it's important to have uh, radar up and you know uh, satellites flying around, letting you know where the enemy base is. Um, but these are two moons so they will destroy each other and uh, completely wipe out everything on those planets so this is the time that it's important to have a teleporter to take uh, whatever ground units you can off and uh, move them to your area of safety there was no good explosion on that one so I'm gonna go ahead and skip to a different uh, different crash that way we can see uh, the little nuke that you get to view 
Um, but yeah, using a teleporter to get your units off the planet uh, at the last minute is a good idea most of the time. Uh, that's what I did for this one. There's no ground units over here. They're all on the metal planet. And um, uh, teleporter is a great way to quickly buff up uh, an ally or a different area with units. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Uh, it's a very easy, straightforward game. It's just a little complicated thanks to the tutorial and game not explaining much. But hopefully this is helpful for you guys. Just get out there, play a few AI matches, and you'll get it figured out pretty quickly. So I hope this is helpful. Have a good one.